Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 66. And this week, I want to show you how you can create lens flares and a sunset that can take a picture from something like this to something like this. All right, so I'm actually going to go through the technique to show you how we create that uh, sunset and the glow. But then afterwards, I'll show you how you can use the exact same technique to create a really realistic lens flare as well. So let's have a look at the, the sunset first of all. Now, here we've got our, li our uh, lion elephant picture. What we're going to do to create this is first of all, I'm going to create a blank layer. And I'm going to get a brush, a white foreground color normal soft edged round brush, making sure there's no settings in there whatsoever. And just for now, I'll put a dab just there. It doesn't matter where we put it at the moment because we can reposition it. Now this is gonna be the sun. This is gonna be the brightest part of it. So what I'll do is I'll rename that to sun. Whoops, sun. And then I'm actually gonna use a blend mode and I'm gonna change it to linear dodge add and you'll see how that affects it all in a moment. But that's the center part. We now need to create the glow. So what I'm gonna do for that is press command or control and the letter J to create a copy of it, go to free transform and then just resize it. And again, we can change the size and all that kind of stuff later on, but for now let's just drag it out so it's a little bit bigger like so. Okay, so let's turn off that top layer. In fact, let's just rename that one to uh, Glow, just so we know what layer does what. And we'll click on the Sun layer now, just to concentrate on that one. Because we need to create a color first onto this one now then. And I'm gonna use a Hue and Saturation Adjustment layer. And I'm gonna click Colorize. But that adds the color to the whole picture. We only want it to be on our layer that's labeled Sun. So then we can click on this little icon down here, which is called a Clipping Mask. And that basically uh, says to Photoshop, only affect the layer directly below you. Now at the moment, we can't see anything. We've added this color to a white layer and we can't see a thing, but here's the great thing we need to do now. I'm gonna choose my color, which we're using the hue slider, and we'll go for somewhere like this yellowy orange kind of color. And then I'm gonna take the saturation slider all the way up to 100%. And then I'm gonna take the lightness slider and bring it down. And as I do that, you then start to see the color coming in and we can get it go really quite a strong, almost like a burning color there on that uh, elephant's leg. But we can play around with that. But the realism now comes when we click on the sun layer and we use the fill slider, not the opacity, but the fill slider. And that's where we can really sort of make the effect look that much better. And now what this does is using the linear dodge blend mode and the fill slider, it gives it a much more realistic kind of look by lowering the strength of it, the darker parts of the underlying layer start to show through, just like they would if you had a light that was actually getting less and less brighter, you'd start to see the dark parts coming through. If I just change this from uh, linear dodge here to normal, you can see the difference is really quite flat. Can you see how that just looks very, very flat and just boring? But the minute I change it from normal to linear dodge, it just gives it a little bit more of a kick. So that's gonna be the sun part. Now let's click on the glow layer and we'll turn that one on as well. Let's just get rid of the properties over there. Now I'm now gonna uh, add a hue and saturation adjustment layer to that one. And again, just like before, we click on colorize and we'll add the clipping mask so the color's only gonna affect that layer below. We'll change this hue to a nice warm yellowish orange kind of color, grab the saturation slider all the way to 100, and then we we'll use the lightness slider to bring in that color, something like so. It's a combination of these two layers. For the sun, you have to affect that one and the hue and saturation for that. The glow, using the fill slider on that one and the hue and saturation kind of really tailor makes the look that you want. So now I'll click on the glow layer and just drag down the fill. And you can see the difference in that there. That looks really quite cool on that elephant's leg. But again, if I change it from linear dodge back to normal, Look how flat it goes, really dull, nothing like a sun glow and a flare, but the minute we change it to linear dodge, the magic starts to happen. So let's now put these four layers here, the sun, hue and saturation, the glow, and that hue and saturation all into a group by shift clicking so they're all less selected, and then we'll go from the flyout menu at the top of the layers panel, new group from layers, and we'll just call it sun. 
something like that. I'm gonna get my move tool and then we can drag it around and put it into place. So I'm gonna just drag it just off the bottom of the picture there. Now, once you've got it into place, that's when you can start playing around and really finessing the look. So let's go to the glow layer. We'll go back to free transform. I'm gonna zoom out just a touch and I'm gonna really increase the size of it so that glow really does start to spill out just onto the, uh, onto the elephant backside just there. And then we can come in and start playing around with the settings. So let's have a look. Let's just drag this way out the way over here so I can play around with the lightness. That looks great. See the difference, just darken it down just a touch, really adding a lot of warmth onto the grass there. And you can see the glow on the backside there of the elephant, loving that. So the trick here is to play around with the settings for each one, play around with the hue and saturation, but also play around with the fill for the actual layer that you're adding in. You can really sort of tailor make the look to exactly how strong or how weak you want the effect to look, something like that. Now I'm actually pretty happy with that as it is at the moment. So let's close that uh, layer there. Again, once it's in a group, we can get the move tool, we can move it around, position it so it's just right. But the thing is, when we're doing this, when we're adding in the actual sun, we have to take it a step further. We can't just add it in. So many times, I'm sure you may have seen it yourselves, where people have added in uh, like a, a, a sort of sunset and a bright light in a part of the picture, and the objects in it don't seem to match up. You need to add in the shadows, and that's when we can add in the shadows here. If we've got a light on the right hand side of the picture, the parts of the picture or the objects that are on the opposite side of it where they're out of view of the sun are going to be much darker and we're going to have those cast shadows that you can see on the floor here. So we we'll turn those on and off, on and off. You can see much, much more realism. And of course, we can take it a little bit further. We could start looking at things like adding a, a photo filter in, a real basic photo filter in here, because if we've got a nice bright sun in one side of the picture, the sky would be warmer as well. So let's just choose a warming filter 81, take the density way up so it really does start to bring in the strength there. And obviously then once we bring the warmth in, we might have to dive in and start playing around with the settings in here so that they're not quite so bright and doesn't look a little bit too saturated. But you can see how quickly we can take a picture that was kind of okay. I was happy with this for a, for a length of time until I discovered how to do the sunset. And it cho totally changes the picture, but it's also the shadows. And we'll cover those in another tutorial. It's the shadows that really do make it it's kind of like a finished product. But so that's that one. That's how we do the sunset. Now I did say, let's have a quick look at the lens flare. This is one of the pictures that I've done the lens flare on. And in the book that I've just written now, that's just about to go to the publishers, I, sh I sort of do a retouch from start to finish of this composite image. And part of it is where we Add that lens flare in. So if we dive over to here, here you can see a part retouched uh, way of that picture and we'll add the lens flare in, which is just here. You can see it on that part. And again, the way we do that, we add a blank layer, we get a brush, a normal soft edge round brush with zero settings in it there, nice and small. And this part here that I drag onto now, bring it in, this is going to be the bright spot where the light's actually hitting the metal on the gun. So that's going to be a small dab just there. Then we create a copy of it like we did with the sun. We go to free transform and then we add and we sort of increase that there. That's going to be the glow. So we'll take it to around about there. So let's turn off the top layer, go to the one underneath, which is this part here, change the blend mode from that from normal to linear dodge. And then we use the fill. And you see, as we do this, can you see how it's just made a very subtle, bright part on that pitch? If I just bring that just a touch, bring that up to around about 50-ish, something like that. It just really subtly brightens that up. But if I change that from linear dodge to normal, look at the difference. Really flat, really boring. But when we use linear dodge, bang, a lot brighter. So now then let's look at the glow. We take the glow, let's turn that one on, change that from normal to linear dodge, use the fill slider, drag it down, and we've got a really nice bright spot in the middle, just like we would have in real life if something like the sun or whatever had hit this metal. It wouldn't be flat and boring like it would be if I changed it from linear dodge to normal. Really flat and uninteresting, linear dodge, bang. So there you go. So that's it. That's two kind of effects you can get out of one technique. My favorite, I've got to say, is using the actual sunset glow. I think it looks great, but you have to add in those shadows later on darker on the side that's not facing the sun and then all those cast shadows. So you can have a lot of fun with this and really change the look and feel of your pictures. So that's all I've got for you this week. Please, if you do like this kind of stuff, just share it. You know, just if you're watching this on social media like Facebook or you've seen it on Twitter, just do me a favor 
over and just click share and let other people know about it. And if you like it, click the like button. And if you want to leave me a comment, leave it and I shall, uh, if there's a question, I'll definitely get back to it. But I really appreciate the support. If you haven't already, click on the subscribe button and I will definitely see you next week for another tutorial. Thank you.